Here's a question. Do you have a legal right, now that we all live in the day and age of our camera phones here, to be recording the cops as they go about doing their job? Well, a man who goes by the name of Jimmy Justice, I can't make this up if I tried, he certainly seems to think so. Step yeah. out my face, okay? Don't make illegal U-turns no, in New York City. Step out my face. I asked you to step out my face. I you asked you not to make illegal U-turns in New York City you? within a business Where district. I am Jimmy Justice. And your days of running around this city like a cowboy are over. You want to give me a camera? Paid, no, I don't have to give you a camera. camera. No, I don't have to give you a camera. It's my First Amendment right as an American citizen. By the way, Jimmy Justice apparently does not wear a superhero outfit here. Um, I, all right. Recording the police may be all fun and games here for uh, the Jimmy Justices of the world, but one woman is filing a federal lawsuit asking a judge, a judge to rule that people have a First Amendment right to film or record police officers in public. Now, the plaintiff, Deborah Goodman, was arrested after capturing a video on her cell phone of EMTs speaking to a woman in a wheelchair while police were nearby. NYPD Patrol Guide says that taking photographs, videotapes, or tape recordings do not constitute probable cause for arrest or detention. However, the lawsuit says it's a widespread policy, practice, and custom for the police to interfere with those who record them. Where's the line, guys? There's actually an, an application that you can get uh, from the New York Civil Liberties Union Stop and Frisk app, and it allows you to record the police. And, and actually, what we found is that when people do that, you are at much greater risk of the police taking your phone, you being assaulted by the police, uh, things like that are more likely to occur. So it actually takes the video and sends it to a server in the cloud. Um, I think that that should absolutely be able to be done because you have no expectation of privacy. The police are not doing something that is private. They're working in a public manner. Uh, they're working, they're supposedly doing their jobs. And you should be able to uh, video, re you know, to record police misconduct. And at the same time, sometimes that video may help the police. So if someone's struggling with the police and you have civilians out there videotaping it, then you know what, it's gonna vindicate the police. We're gonna show a clip next segment though, uh, Jimmy, that is up for interpretation, uh, that, that case out of Hawaii and stuff. But imagine for a second that you're on camera, that everybody walking by is photographing your every movement, every word you say, context is now a debatable thing, uh, not the, what's in the frame, what's not in the frame and everything else. Is it a fair standard to put to police that whenever, wherever you are, as long as you got your uniform on um, and you step out the precinct house, you should and, and, and you should expect to be on camera every uh, movement and word you utter record. I mean, it may be an inconvenience and it may be annoying, but when you step out in your suit, in my suit, in our shorts, in our sweats, into the public arena where everybody's got a camera on their phone, you're subjecting yourself to that. There's no reason why you can't film a police officer doing their job, a reporter doing their job, anybody doing their job in public with respect to the police, as long as you're not obstructing justice. If the police are in the middle of doing something, effectuating an arrest, doing their job, and your filming of them gets in the way, you're stepping in between them and a suspect, or you're in any way preventing them from doing their job, uh, that's a different story. But if we're out in the public, we subject ourselves to being filmed. They've made arguments um, that Doug uh, the potential sources could be compromised in doing this if they're uh, looking at a particular uh, uh, known drug area and they're trying to uh, monitor the situation uh, their investigation could be compromised as well doing this that police work is different than you know what we do for a living um, and that it's a fluid thing that happens in real time there's no script that's going along with it and recording it isn't a fair representation always, and let alone potentially a dangerous one. Is there any merit to that? Well, I think there's a couple of arguments in there. I, I don't know of any cases where somebody's recording undercover police officers trying to effectuate police work. It's usually people that are in uniform. And there's a reason why these pe same people that are taking these photos and uh, video are not doing this to you know, uh, mailmen. I mean, the reason is because there's, there's a question about the conduct of what police officers are saying happened and what it actually is happening. And so, like Mayo was saying, th listen, this could help these. Most police officers are probably doing a great job, an honest job, but the, for the guys that aren't, this I is I've a heard way an argument that in a perverse way, if you're an officer and you're going into an area 
um, you know, that's known as uh, whether it's a high drug uh, transaction area or whatever else, you may be less inclined to get out of the squad car here and go over to see what the kids are doing because, you know, you're only inviting yourself to a potential lawsuit if somebody's got a camera and you're recording and, you know, you put hands on somebody or you do something else because you don't know what's going on. Is there an argument? If you're conducting yourself properly, yeah. then you want that filming to happen. I mean, you know. You guys aren't buying when we were no. in the, I was in the DA's no. office. A guy claimed that the police had been abusing him. We looked at the videotape. Videotape showed that not only were they not abusing him, they treated him beautifully. They didn't cuff him when they were supposed to actually cuff him. They brought him a meal that he asked for. It was vindicating. It, it basically decided the case just on that video alone. Well, I happen to agree with guys the whole time. I was reaching here. I was kept trying to find arguments. <laughs> this thing didn't work. You're not I don't great. like guys. I don't <laughs> like people recording every single thing as the camera's pointing right at my face. All right, coming up next, <laughs> former Vikings player Chris Cluey. He is taking his old team to court after he got canned. Cluey says he was let go of challenging alleged homophobic comments made by his coach. How can his attorney prove it? And does Cluey actually have a case?